Hey guys, Pharaoh 880 and I'm going to show you my three-day adventure of changing the gimbal bearing and also fixing the U-joint bellow and a couple of other things on my Bayliner 175. As you can tell, I'm exhausted. I'm sorry that I'm kind of doing this halfway into the job, but there was no way I could do the camera at the same time, plus I would have wasted three days of filming. So, without further ado, let me show you my mistakes and advice, tools, and everything that has made it happen. So the best way to explain it is, um, ever since I've had the boat, I've taken on a little bit of water every time that we've got done using it and put it up for storage inside my warehouse. I'd always have water come out of the bilge or, you know, sometimes I'd check the engine compartment when I got, you know, when we were in the middle of the lake and stuff, but I'd see water. Boats aren't supposed to leak water. Some do, most do, but theoretically if a boat is correctly set up with no issues at all, a boat theoretically is not supposed to leak water. Also, I've been having this barren noise. I was hoping it wasn't a gimbal barren, but it turned out to be the gimbal barren. And again, I think my boat's got 19 hours on it now, but the original owner kept it stored with the uh, drive tilted up. And I didn't really think of it much until now of what those kind of problems could cause. I went ahead and I removed my speedometer tube. I went ahead and removed the trim rams or the, the shaft for the trim rams, which is basically a cotter pen, not a cotter pen, but a, a C-clip. And you basically just work your pen out and your bushings out. You drop your, your trim rams. And then you remove your six out drive bolts. Now, as you can see, I don't have any special marine tools as a lot of other people have. But, listen to this. Let me see if you can hear this. Yeah. My, uh, my gimbal bearing is shot. It is beyond shot. You need to go to the auto parts store and rent one of these hammer type devices or sliders. You're also going to need something to pull the Baron out with. Now, this was my first attempt from AutoZone. It is a Pilot Baron remover tool used for clutches and Pilot Barons. The problem is it doesn't get, it doesn't go around the bearing enough to pull it out. Number two, here is the old Baron. What I did not know, many of you boat mechanics out there are probably laughing your asses off right now. What I did not know is the Baron swivels inside the race, or whatever that's called. That Baron swivels. So as I was pulling it out with this device, my Baron was swiveling all around and I thought it was a complete disaster. Then I found out that AutoZone has these. And if I'm correct, this you can rent that with this from AutoZone. And what this does is you slide it to the side like this, you can push your push it through your bearing, and then you get an even pull around your bearing. This piece here screws to the end of this. This will save you about four hours of headache with no success when trying to pull the bearing out with this thing that doesn't work. Now, when you get your new bearing, you're gonna have to put it in. One of my friends lent me his massive monster socket and extension. And the problem with this is, even though it covers most of the bearing, the weight of it, because the socket is so heavy, you can't get a firm hit on the Baron because the weight is pulling you down. So what I ended up doing was I use, I don't know if this is an actual 2x4, looks like a 2x4, but I cut this down. I think it's about probably 14 inches in length. And this allowed me to get a nice surface around the entire Baron. And that was my hammer. That sucker's got a ton of weight to it with uh, blunt force and with that and this piece of wood I was able to safely get my new bearing 
into the transom assembly or the gimbal assembly in less than 30 seconds. Now, on to my bellow issue. My bellows pulled away at the bottom. I'll show you a picture now. That is the the uh, the drive bellow, and who knows how long it's been uh, not seated. See the clamp is pushed forward. My bellows pulled away from the bottom because of the outdrive being stored in the upright position for a very very long period of time. What I was able to do, I've got this is my little uh, tool for tuning carburetors on motorcycles is what it's called and it disallowed me to get into the clamp that clamps onto the bellow. I was able to loosen the clamp on the bellow, got some Mercruiser at, uh, bellow adhesive, and I was able to re-glue the bellow back onto the transom assembly. So here is the new gimbal bearing installed. Something to note, now this is a 2006 Bayliner. You have a grease fitting down here which then would go in to a, a hole in the original gimbal bearing and grease them. The new gimbal bearings now are sealed. And there's a, with the gimbal bearing, I've got a block off kit or screw, if you want to call it, that goes in there and blocks that off so you can't oil it anymore. It's now all sealed. Also, another thing, I was told by several people to go ahead and replace this gasket. And I figured, why? That's a waste of time it should be just fine. With me trying to get the outdrive back on, I boogered my gasket up, so yes, it's good to have all your gaskets also ready to go. On other videos, you've seen people store these in the um, horizontal position. And the reason being for that is, if you have these pointed down without them spread apart like this, you can't get your outdrive back on, because the outdrive hits right here. That's why people have the RAM stored in the horizontal position. Also, when you take your outdrive off, you have it in the forward gear. And the reason for that is this is your shift mechanism. So when your outdrive slides in, the apart from the outdrive slides in here as well. And when it's in forward, it can slide right in here very easily. If it's in neutral or reverse, it won't happen. Another thing as well. Before you remove your outdrive, you must disconnect your speedometer sending tube that clips onto the outdrive. And let's see. Oh, another question that I was interested in when I first tried to do this is, do I have to drain the reservoir, the uh, gear lube reservoir that's mounted to the engine? And the answer is no. This is, this is a spring-loaded uh, valve right here. So when the outdrive is off, it shuts off this valve and doesn't allow grease to continuously drain out of the reservoir. Another thing, be very careful with your gasket right here for your or o-ring for your pickup tube or your uh, water entry that comes from the water pump. This can easily fall off and right now what I've, what I've done and what a lot of other people have suggested is use grease to hold it in place while you're installing the outdrive. Now what I did to make this easier is I took my clip off right here for my rams. I pushed it out some and this spread my rams apart. This one here is resting on my cardboard down here so I can easily install my outdrive. This here, folks, is called an alignment tool. I know what you're saying. I don't need an alignment tool. My engine is fine. You're probably right. You don't need an alignment tool. But what I'm having a problem with right now is my outdrive is going right to here and stopping. I can't get it in any further. Now, can it be my alignments out? It's a possibility. Remember the gimbal bearing swivels. Is it a possibility that my gimbal bearing is not swiveled or lined up correctly with the coupler on the engine? That's a high possibility as well. off. It sure is. That explains why I can't. So it was absolutely necessary to have this alignment tool and the reason being is my bearing was just off just a hair and 
now I can pull this alignment tool in perfectly with no problems. And that was causing me not to, a, not to be able to put my outdrive on yesterday. This is the gasket set that I picked up from my local boat dealer, 27-94996, Quebec 2. $9.99 for this. Taking the old O-ring out and putting in a new one. So there is your speedometer pickup tube and there is the shift lever. Now the shift lever right now is in forward gear, allowing it to be perpendicular with the boat, aligned with the shifter mechanism on the gimbal assembly. So what just happened is, as I was about to slide this in, my O-ring for the water pump pickup just fell out. So I got to pull this all back off and try to find out where it went. So there you have it folks, all put back together, and I even just changed the drive, gear oil lube. I had a two bad O-rings, one on the bottom, one at the top. That's got to be probably one of the hardest things that I've done to this date mechanically. That was rough, and I can tell you what, I was quoted between five hundred and six hundred and fifty dollars to do that job and I can honestly see why they charge that kind of money the biggest problem that I ran into was not having the correct tools trying to get that gimbal bearing out with that pilot bearing puller just ain't just it just wasn't happening and I, I wasted four hours monkeying with that puller trying to make it work with the correct puller I had it out in no time putting the bearing back in to the the transom assembly, again, I wasted time if I would have had to, or known about the wood, um, I would have saved me some time and a lot of headache. The biggest problem was getting the stern drive back into the transom assembly. It wouldn't go in. I fought with it yesterday, and I fought with it yesterday. Um, now, a couple of tricks here. If you see on the internet, you read some of the... Uh, postings on Google and some other videos people tell you to put it in forward make sure that you can turn that prop locking it counterclockwise 
that is when you do that not only does it lock but it also keeps the um, shifter on the drive unit itself um, lined up correctly to go back in uh, with the shift assembly on the transom assembly otherwise if you move it the other way it'll actually come out of uh, come out of forward gear and I guess that's the way it's designed and also by um, if it does if the out drive doesn't slide all the way in you can rotate it counterclockwise to move your splines just a hair enough to get it into the um, the transom or into the engine coupler that is a that is probably one of the biggest tips and tricks that I can tell you be patient with it the engine alignment tool was probably a necessity I can tell you this right now I would not have got that stern drive in without that alignment tool because it you know your bearing your gimbal bearing swivels and stuff and if the bearings not swiveled or lined up correctly with the engine coupler even though the engine has its own alignment my drive unit was not going in and finally I just gave up I went home yesterday um, a good friend of mine has and this is the one that I borrowed the tool from to pull the bearing out. This is the one that I borrowed the tool or the alignment tool. He's getting a free pizza too. So all in all, if you have the correct tools, if you watch a couple of YouTube videos and know ahead of time what you're about to get into, do not try to do it in one day. Could it be done in one day? Now what I know? Probably. But give yourself, allow yourself plenty of time to take your time Learn from my mistake and other people's mistakes, and you should be able to get it done with no problem at all. Whew. Thanks again for watching my videos. Click subscribe, like over here, and we will see you soon.